So how do artists actually make money? Hello everyone! Welcome to Art Business with Ness. I'm Ness and I'm a professional illustrator. Back in late 2020 when I first started this channel, one of my very first videos was how I make money as an artist. And you guys were really interested in that. But this has been a hot minute. <laughs> and I recently realized wow, my art business has changed so much since then. Almost none of the things that I mentioned in this video are things that I still do now. I do completely different stuff. So it's definitely time for a little refresh. I think you'll find it very interesting to see what I do now to earn my key. So please, let's do all the youtube -y things. Comment, like, subscribe, hit that little bell for notifications, and let's just jump right into the subject. So the biggest thing that has changed since 2020 is I used to be a full-time picture book illustrator then, but now I've actually switched my market to surface illustration. And I get asked a lot why I did that. And it's just because picture books take a very long time to create. It was anywhere between four or five months for me. And I noticed that by the end of a project, I was always super tired, burnt out. I just wanted to move on. <laughs> I always had this excitement when I first started, but by the end I was like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And so I realized that actually maybe picture books aren't quite such a good fit for me. And I went looking for a market where I could work on smaller, shorter projects that could get more variety. And I found surface design. Surface design is any illustration or patterns that are going to be used on different products. It could be greeting cards, it could be fabrics, it could be anything that you can think of that has art on it. It's basically creating art for surfaces. So here's how I earn a living as a surface designer. One art licensing i often say as professional illustrators we are in the business of copyrights the business of intellectual property it's not just about exchanging our time for money but it's about giving companies the usage of our art for a fee and now that i'm a surface designer this is mostly how I sell my art. Basically, I create a bunch of illustrations and patterns and then I let companies borrow them for a fee so that they can put it on their products and make money with it. They pay me for commercial usage of my intellectual property. Art licensing is really cool, but it can get a little bit complicated when you look into the details, the pricing, the negotiation, the deals. <laughs> There's mainly two ways that I sell my copyrights. The first one is a one-time fee. So I love this because it's so simple. Uh, they give me money and I give them the art. Boom, finished. But this does encompass a whole lot of deals. It can be exclusive, it can be non-exclusive, it can be that I rent them my copyrights just for one year, it could be two years, it could be five years. And sometimes I also sell the piece outright, so it no longer belongs to me, I give them all the rights. Typically, that's paid more, so yay! The second way that I do sometimes as well is getting paid by royalties. So that's when you get a percentage of the product's sales. This can actually be very lucrative for a surface designer, but it does take a lot of time to get paid because after you give them the art, they have to produce the product, then they have to do the whole distribution and put it on the shelves. And then they wait like a whole quarter and they calculate how much you made during that quarter and then they send you the check. Sometimes it can be a year or two before you get paid for the art that you sent them. That's a very long time to wait. I signed my very first deal in surface design in the late 2021. It was for a Christmas gift wrap paper. And it was almost two years later <laughs> in May 2023 that I finally received my first check for that but I did get about $600 for the first year that it was on sale. And this is a five year deal. So when it's all said and done, I'm gonna get about $3,000 for this one pattern. That's not bad at all. I probably couldn't get as much if I sell it outright or if I get a one-time fee. However, I would get that right now. I also have two of my picture books that still earn royalties. So there's this one, the Panda book, which was actually my very first picture book ever. 
I earned royalties on this one. And this one, this tiny cute little Christmas book about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. This one actually does the best <laughs> out of these two books because it sells every year at Christmas. And they actually printed a new edition just this year. So this is going to be on the shelves for this Christmas season. And I'm going to get a check for this. These are my French books for the Quebec market. So it's not a huge amount. But even though I don't even do picture books anymore, I still continue to receive small residuals for the sales of these books. So that's why royalties are fun. But the bulk of my income from art licensing is from my new deals. So for any greeting cards, gift wrap, I did some scrapbooking kits, fabrics, I did a wallpaper once. This is how I sell my artwork now. And what I really love about this method of doing things is that I can create the art first and then find a buyer for it. This gives me a lot of freedom to create what I feel like in this moment. Of course, there are things that sell more than others, like Christmas stuff, always in demand, birthday stuff. So I create a lot of these things because I know they will sell. But if one day I get up and I really don't feel like doing any Christmas stuff, I want to draw flowers, I can do that. I love that. My second revenue method is freelance contracts. So freelance work is custom artwork created to a client's specifications. This used to be my main art income when I did my last video, but now I only do this occasionally. For example, I designed some scrapbook kits for a Christian journaling company that was really fun. Recently, I did some custom patterns for a small apparel company, but I only do this rarely. Most companies really like to buy the designs that you already have in your catalog because they get to see exactly what they will get <laughs> when you do custom work it hasn't been created yet but they can look at your catalog and if they fall in love with something then they buy it and they get it they know exactly what it is that's the appeal of course you can't do that for things like picture books it has to be created for a specific manuscript so if you work in that market or in editorial illustration things like that then most of the work you will be doing is freelance Number three, my third revenue stream is online courses. When I did my last video, I had just started this YouTube channel, but now it's been a while and I have developed this. I have over 80 videos now on YouTube and I also have created multiple online courses to teach you guys how to make a living with your art. It took me a while though, after the release of that video, it took me another good eight months before my first online course saw the light of day. That was the Art Business Bootcamp Level 1. Now I have a roster of five online courses that I still sell and teach regularly and make income from. Mostly I have two different types of courses. First of all, I have my signature courses. So these are my Art Business Bootcamps Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. These are huge programs that took me forever to create. I designed them to be the exact step-by-step -step roadmap to becoming a freelance illustrator, even if you're starting from scratch and all the way to full-time professional details, every single thing. In total, it took me about 18 months to put these courses together, but now they're all created and I continue selling them passively and supporting the artists that are in the course with you know one-on-one -on -one support and answering questions and things like that then the second type i also have mini courses <laughs> when i finished my art business boot camps i thought wow that was a lot <laughs> and now i think i'm only going to be creating mini courses going forward so these typically take me about a month to write film and teach and they talk more specifically about a topic like Instagram for artists recently I did, or I had my picture book portfolio prompts 10 day course. So while my big signature courses, I continue selling them in the background. My mini courses, I release a new one every once in a while and do a whole launch. And so it's a one month intense working on that, that creates a little spike of revenue. The next one I'll be doing is going to be in January and it's called The Healthy Artist. It's going to talk about overcoming art block and art crisis, imposter syndrome, lack of motivation, that type of a thing. I can't wait to teach that. I've really fallen in love with teaching artists and it's really created this nice community. I love being able to interact with a lot of artists like that. It really gets 
my socialization needs taken care of <laughs> but teaching really does take a lot of time and effort so it's not for everyone i have two more revenue streams that i have to cover but first i'm really curious to hear have you sold your art before and if so how if you haven't yet but you would like to make a living with your art let me know in the comments also which one of these revenue streams interests you the most now on to my fourth revenue stream which is youtube revenue in my last video about this topic i wasn't even monetized yet my channel was brand new but now since the summer of 2021 i am monetized so i make ad revenue from youtube it's not terribly much money i'm still a small channel even at 20,000 subscribers it's still considered pretty small I'd say at the peak, I made about $500 per month in ad revenue, but it has declined a bit since. Now I make anywhere between $200 and $300 in ad revenue per month. But this is definitely something that I'd like to improve. I want to get back into the YouTube game and do more videos, hopefully weekly. I will really try that in 2024. I want to grow my channel and make this a bigger revenue stream in 2024. So look forward to a lot more great new videos next year. The other way that YouTube also makes me revenue is with sponsorships. I don't do them very often, only occasionally because I vet them very, very seriously. I will only work with companies that have products that I actually use and like, so it's very few and far between. But I've done sponsorship with Wix before and Sale Samurai, which is a great Etsy tool that I use all the time. And now I also have a monthly sponsorship with Invoice Ninja as well. Right now I make about $450 per month from the sponsorship. So if you add that to my ad revenue, I make about $700 per month from my YouTube channel, which is not, you know, a whole lot it won't pay the whole rent but still like it helps and i'd really like to work more on that in 2024 and lastly i have my online art shops so first i have an etsy shop where i sell digital planners and digital planner stickers but last time i made a video about my income etsy was a bigger part of my income i was really spending a lot of time on it i was releasing new collections almost every single month but now to be honest after it's been like what three four years since i had this etsy shop and I've gotten a little bit bored with it, if I want to be honest. So in the last couple of years, I've gradually started focusing more on other projects. I haven't updated my Etsy shop now in several months. <laughs> it's a little bit embarrassing. So because of that, the sales have declined, but I still sell passively my roster of products that I have. I have almost 100 products, I think, on that Etsy shop. They continue to sell, but of course, when you're not active on Etsy, when you're not really actively listing new products, the sales will decline. So it's not nearly as much as it used to make, but still, you know, for a zero time spent on it, I'll take it. But I've now also opened a print on demand shop on Spoonflower because surface design is actually extremely compatible with the print on demand model. So I'm talking about things like Redbubble, Society6, Spoonflower, you upload your art and they put it on products and send you a commission from that. As a surface designer, you create patterns and illustrations that are meant to put on products. So super compatible with the type of art that I'm making. Now, platforms like Redbubble or Society6 are already extremely saturated. It's not impossible to start from scratch, but it is very difficult. So personally, I decided to try Spoonflower instead, which is still fairly competitive, but less so than these other websites. My shop is still very new. I just opened it a few months ago and I'm starting to slowly build up my catalog of patterns that I uploaded there, but still already I've made several sales without doing any promotion at all. So I'm happy about this new possible income stream and I want to develop it further in 2024. So this is it. These are now the five ways that I make money as an artist. And when I was writing this video, I really realized just how much my business has changed in just a few years. An art career or an art business is a constant evolution. There's never a dull moment. It always changes depending on what your interests are and also you know the environment you adapt but that's not working anymore so you're gonna try something else it's 
always changing. But personally, I think that's a good thing. There's never a boring day. And now I'm super curious, what will my art career look like another three years from now? If you too would like to make a living with your art and get some clients, I have a free guide that you might enjoy. It's called Seven Surprising Ways to Find Illustration Clients. It is completely free and I will leave the link to that in the description below. But that's it for me today. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to help our still small channel grow. Thank you so, so much for being here. I appreciate you and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.